so I just I gotta tell you I'm so sick of people asking me what psychological books that I learned these things from and and I'm, I'm telling it's such a chil Hashem why do from people read my column and ask me where did I get these psychological insights from it's a chil Hashem that's like you come to my house and you eat my, my wife's cooking you say wow this is treif right no no it's a compliment because it's so good it's treif right <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're saying oh but that was so practical and so relevant that that had to be from secular books oh okay now I, now I know what you think of Torah I mean I'm not going to pretend I never heard about these concepts obviously I heard these concepts I didn't study them officially but you know whatever I I I heard the words, I heard the terms, and I, sometimes I use the oisius of it, because the same way, you know, you're explaining a concept of exodus, you use a mushal. A mushal, you're using the oisius of it to, to exp express a concept, but it's just oisius, just a way of expressing the concept. The concept is from exodus. All of these practical things that people assume come from secular sources, they don't. They, I promise you, they don't come from secular sources. They couldn't come from secular sources. The secular world doesn't have this stuff. It comes from Torah. Just, you have to sit and think for a minute how to translate it from theoretical to practical. But it's all there. It's all right there. Okay, so if you open a Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, it's spelled out for you. It tells you how to get up in the morning, how to wash your hands. Okay, it's spelled out for you. You open up a Mimer, and, okay, a little bit more work is required. But not that much more work. It's not like you're opening up a Zayr and trying to get from Zayr to, you know, how to deal with life. You're opening up a Mimer. The Mimer did 99% of the work for you. Now just sit and think about it for a minute. But no, you don't want to think about it. You just want to learn it and, and, and feel good that you learned it and then that's it. Or be impressed by it or have a vort to repeat or... I mean, whatever. I, 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 know, I, uh, I know myself. I know myself. I know what it is to misuse chassidus. To use it either because it's interesting or because it's a distraction or because it gives you something interesting to tell other people. I, I, I understand. But that's not what it's for. It's supposed to change you. And it's supposed to guide you in practical, everyday, down-to-earth ways. So if you're learning Chassidus and it's not affecting your marriage, it's not affecting your relationship with your kids, not affecting the way you deal with annoying co-workers, not affecting the way that you stress out or don't stress out about money, then, then you're not learning Chassidus properly. The Rebbe speaks about this in Kuntras in Yonah Shalteris Chassidus, you know, about the, the Eivish that says, that uh, Barasi Yitzhahara, I created a Yitzhahara, but I made Torah Tavlin. I made Torah as a, as a literally spice, but it means uh, a remedy, an antidote. Uh, so the Rebbe says, Torah Tavlin? Tavlin for the Yitzhahara? So basically, that's what you're saying about Torah? Torah is how to deal with the Yitzhahara? It sounds so demeaning. It sounds, it's just so you take Torah, which is was written black fire on white fire 2,000 years before the world was created. And then you're going to say, you know what it's for? It's for how to deal with your disgusting animalistic desires. Wow, really? So that explains there. Not tchilasim b'seifin v'seifin b'tchilasim. That's what it says in, in, in the Sefer Yitzira. Everything's a circle. The ends are wedged in the beginnings. The beginnings are wedged in the end. Taita, of course, it, it comes from above the worlds. How do you see how lofty Taita is? How low it comes down. That it deals with the lowest nitty-gritty dysfunction of real life. Meaning the 90% of letters I get that aren't published. The ones you see published are the tame ones. <laughs> the 90% are not published because we have to pretend those issues don't go on in our community.
There's real issues, real pain, real dysfunction, conflict. And it's happening all around us. But, but, but here's the thing. Torah has guidance for that too. It would be unfortunate if we would use Torah when it comes to a Shailan Basa Bechalov, but not when we're really struggling with a, a problem in life that's getting to us. That's not Yisparnas and Mineh. <clears throat> that's... You leave Torah up there on a high shelf and you admire it and you take it down as a museum piece once in a while to, to look at it and you put it back and keep it safe. I'll put it this way. If, if, if the Torah that I'm learning and I'm thinking about and then the davening also. Davening is important. Davening is when I'm really internalizing the, the, the learning. If that isn't addressing whatever it is that is heavy on my heart right now, I'm not doing it right. All of these tools are from Toyota and especially